understanding that the shofar's roots are traced to Genesis chapter 22. God provided the ram in place of Isaac with its horn caught in a thicket. After sacrificing the ram, tradition says that Abraham took one horn from the ram as the first shofar. It is also my understanding that the other horn of this ram is known as the last shofar, which will be blown by Elohim at the end of the ages. Can someone expand on this first and last shofar traditional teaching? Also, if you could point me to official writings or documents referencing this, I would be able to cite something. Uh, excellent questions, because the question is, you know, tradition says, and then, you know, the traditional teaching. Well, I, there's a traditional teaching of the Easter Bunny and traditional teachings of Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. When you talk about traditions, they have absolutely no weight for reality, okay? People can just make stuff up, and this is one of those things that obviously is just made up. The last horn, how is that going to be somehow the last shofar? This is not what it's speaking of. When, when it refers to the last trump, the last shofar, or the last trump, as we read about Shaul uh, talking about the resurrection, he says at the last trump is when the resurrection of the saints will happen. We go to the book of the Revelation. There are seven trumpets. At the seventh trumpet, that was when the cry goes out, the seventh trumpet is blown, the righteous are raised and rewarded, his servants, the prophets, small and great, are raised and rewarded, and now he will destroy those destroyers of the earth, and then the seven bowls of wrath are what su uh, succeed after that. And so within the context, what we're talking about, in Shaul speaking of the last trump, he's talking about the seventh trump, the same thing in the book of the Revelation. As far as pointing you to some official writings or documents about a tradition, it would be just as fruitful to give you the original writings and documents about the Easter Bunny, because it was Semiramis, the wife of Nimrod, who came down out of heaven in this giant egg. After being named the Queen of Heaven, she was sent back to the earth in a giant egg, which plummeted into the Euphrates River and out emerged Semiramis reincarnated as Easter, the bare-breasted sex goddess of Babylon who turned a bird into an egg-laying rabbit to proclaim her divinity. And so after you have that story, then you just have traditions and, and just repeated nonsense that goes down through all ages, but yet you have part of the pagan uh, the pagan practice that we now know as Easter and the Easter sunrise service. So. Uh, don't uh, don't try to get any deeper in a tradition out of this last so far than that.